Hello everybody and welcome back to Crusader Kings 2 A Game of Thrones and we are back with our House Longspear custom house playthrough here on the channel and things are going very well for us at the moment. When we left off on the last episode we've finally taken the entirety of the High Lordship of Duskendale. We own all five of these provinces here uh, if we have a look at it here. So from Duskendale to Birch Hall all of these belong to us and will eventually be passed on to our various children and when we left off we were trying to gain claims on everywhere up here in North Cracklow Point, which will give us two High Lordships to our name, which, you know, is, is the beginning of a pretty decent bit of land for us, but uh, possibly a, a kingdom in the future, if we play our cards right. So, yeah, I'm quite looking forward to seeing how that grows. We just need this claim on North Cracklow Point itself, and then we'll have all the claims we need to declare war, and hopefully take five more bits of land. It will start getting difficult, though, because we will be massively over our demands limit, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Currently we can hold three and we have five and that'll take it up to ten. But we do have two sons. We have Laren Longspear and Osney Longspear who will eventually be able to inherit land. We also have a son-in-law, Benjen Umber, who will eventually be coming down into the family and we can hopefully give him some land. Because it's a matrilineal uh, marriage, they will be of Longspear dynasty, so they will inherit the land eventually. So things are looking good. Possibly three heirs to our bits of land. And yeah, we've actually developed into a decent character. When we first started uh, playing with this character, he wasn't the best. He's very low stats, but through various events and different things, we've managed to get to be a pretty decent character, actually. 11 Diplomacy, 16 Martial, 13 Stewardship, 5 Intrigue, and 10 Learning, which isn't bad at all. So, going to set the game playing and see what sort of trouble we get into in this episode. I mean, I hope we don't get into any trouble properly, but you never know on this game. Our son is currently being educated by Sir Mala one of the King's Guard, a stone Dornishman, and he's got good martial, and he is a formidable fighter, so hopefully our son will become an excellent sword swordsman, uh, and we'll eventually play as him. He is our heir, so he's already got seven martial at the age of ten, which is very, very good indeed. He is greedy, unfortunately, which lowers his diplomacy. Not too worried about that, to be honest. I think we can deal with that. So, yeah, this episode is mostly going to be waiting for that claim to be gained on North Cracklaw Point. That's kind of the key objective. I think we have enough men to take it. We have just over 6,000 men, and he has 2,000 men at his disposal. Uh, I think he's, yeah, he's the High Lord. Um, so yeah, he's only got 2,000 men, so obviously his vassals don't particularly like him at the moment. So if we could get that claim quickly, it would be the perfect time to strike. I mean, I could, you know, attack and take all of these bits of land for myself anyway, but then I'd just be waiting for a truce to be declared against uh, Goodwin the Cruel. So I feel like Take, wait, waiting a little bit longer, getting that claim and taking all the land in one sort of big battle will hopefully work. I mean, we have to hope that the king doesn't try and intercept and tell us not to. Stefan, who is actually our son-in-law, um, yeah, our, it's, yeah, no, brother-in-law, in fact. Our sister, uh, Rowella Longspear, is married to the king, so hopefully he likes us a bit more because of that. They do actually have a son as well, my nephew, who stands to inherit the throne, which would be quite useful for us. Um, sorry, I heard some shouting. I didn't know where it came from. Um, but yeah, that's really thrown me off. I don't know why that threw me off so much. Oh no. Let's get back into it. Yes, anyway, this point here. So, essentially the plan after this is to... Oh, there's a Grand Tournament of King's Landing. Now, we're not the best fighter, but I think we'll go anyway, just in case. We gained 40 prestige just for turning up, so it's worth going for. I think once we take a North Crackler point, we'll start to look south in our conquest. Um, I'll look at that in a second. Because Rosby do actually have a claim on Brindlewood. They seem... Both Rosby people now, him and his father, both try to get claims on my land. So I feel like we may need to look to eliminate this threat. And if we have Rosby on our side, then we have this very nice bit of northern territories in the Crown Lands. It'd be very difficult for people to attack us and take our land because we are quite a sizable force. And then after that, we may look to take Dragonstone. That's kind of one of the ultimate objectives, is to get Dragonstone for ourselves. Gives us a chance to get dragons, first of all, which would be interesting, to say the least. But also, it's just a very defensible piece of land, so that would be quite nice to have. Anyway, there are always things that need to be done when it comes to expanding and improving a castle. With the proper planning and diligent work, I can make sure the work becomes more efficient. So we can reduce the costs of building things or reduce the time. I think we're going to go with cost because that's going to be very useful for us as we try and build a small force. I think everyone has at least a militia training ground. In fact, Antlers doesn't. My wife is pregnant again, which is very nice. Um, militia training ground there. Okay, so it's just in Antlers we don't have one. So we'll build a militia training ground there, just so to squeeze a few extra troops from these bits of land. 
We will start getting more once we start to give this land out to our children or our heirs because they'll start to be able to command them a lot better. I don't know why Athos... Oh, why is he in my... Oh, he's the... Yeah, he's the sellsword that got a dragon. That's why he's in my uh, important characters. I don't think we're going to need him. I doubt we'll be hiring him anytime soon. And we'll try and remember the name for if we do need to hire some. I haven't actually been looking at the tournament, to be honest. I should have been doing that. But we've gone through a lot of tournaments, so I'm going to click through quite quickly. Uh, Beldakar Faith seems to have, or Vaith seems to have won. 14 dual skill, formidable fighter as well, so unsurprising he managed to get the win. He's wounded and depressed. I think he'd be a bit happier after winning that tournament, to be honest, but apparently not. Yeah, so I think we got knocked out in the very early rounds. As I said, we're not the best fighters there. I was simply passing time at the tournament when I came across two knights arguing over honour. I knew straight away that the argument was spurious and the result would be unnecessary bloodshed, bloodshed so I stepped in and prevented it. I'm more diplomatic than I thought. So we gain another point of diplomacy, which is very nice. Uh, so King Stefan's tournament has now ended. He does have a Valyrian steel sword, but he's not reforged it yet. So it'll be interesting to see what he rebrands that as. Let's actually have a quick look around. I'm going to... No, I'll keep it playing, actually, and have a look at some of the High Lords around. So Lord Paramount Harold is currently Lord Paramount in the Westlands. He's crippled and ugly. He's the son of Tyrion the Imp. So Tyrion did take power in the Westlands eventually. In the Reach, it's um, the Florence have managed to take power back. Uh, Alakin Florent, the son of Alistair, uh, I believe that makes him the nephew of Axel Florent. Yeah, the nephew of Axel Florent. That's how I tend to remember the Florent family through Axel Florent. So that's interesting that the Tyrells have lost their power there. In Dawn, it's, I presume it's still the Martells. It is Ariane Martell, daughter of Prince Duran, so not many changes there. In the Stormlands, uh, Tommen the Gallant Karen. Fair enough, not quite sure how they managed to, to take power, but the Karens somehow managed to take the Stormlands for themselves. In the Trident, it is still Edmure Tully, not surprising there, not many changes in the Riverlands very often. In the Vale, uh, Paramount Gustin Arryn, so another Arryn, son of the second John the Arryn. Um, oh, I'm trying to figure out how this family... So that's Lord Paramount John II. How is he related to John Arryn? Somehow connected. I'm, I'm not going to go through it all. I don't want to waste too much time. And Lord Paramount Eddard II of the North. So he's the son of Rob Stark and Sorella Stand. Uh, and of course the grandson of um, Eddard Stark. So Stark's still in power in the North, which makes a nice change. Looks like there's a big beyond the wall army forming. I think that's all the High Lordships I've been through. Oh, and the Iron, Th the Iron Isles are still the Greyjoys. Paramount Quellin is the son of uh, Victorian Greyjoy. Fair enough. So, not too many changes, to be honest, in terms of High Lords. Um, the, the Stormlands and the Ve and the uh, uh, the Reach, that's the one, are the only ones that seem to have changed. A young artist is working on a divine icon of the Mother, the, res the aspect of the Seven, representing motherhood and nurturing. He needs sponsorship to finish it so we can place it in our own sept. So we can sponsor it, lose 11 gold but gain 10% fertility, or say we can't afford it and lose piety. We'll go for the top one when we can afford it, and having more heirs will only be useful for us. Um, it just gives us more opportunity to give more land out. And we have, in fact, had a daughter, Sorella. I'm going to change her name because someone in the comment section um, a few couple of videos ago did ask if the next child could be called William. Obviously, this isn't a male, so I'm not going to call them William, but I'm going to call them something similar, and I'm going to go with Wyler, uh, which is a more northern name, but I quite like the name Wyler, so we'll go with that. I prefer it to Cirilla. So we'll go with Wyler Longspear, our second daughter. So hopefully, we can start to look for an alliance with her, try and marry her off to someone a bit more practical and useful, because the first one we had, we obviously married off uh, Machalina Lee. Whether we need to do that with this daughter as well, I'm not quite sure. We'll leave it for now. I'm not going to look for a betrothal just yet. Um, we'll wait until she's a bit older for that. It's not in a in a mad rush. We've got, what, 14 years to find someone? So it'd be useful to have someone somewhat close to us as an ally, because then if we do need to start going to war with any bigger powers or people with more troops than us, we do have some backup, essentially. I'm not quite sure where my spymaster is. Um... Our spymaster is building a spy network in Rosby. Okay, we're actually going to send him to sabotage the economy of North Cracklaw Point while our Justiceer tries to fabricate that claim. Do we have anyone better at it? No. 14's the highest. The military training grounds in Antlers is finished, so they're going to have 
a couple more troops. Not a huge amount, but a, a decent amount more than they had. And at this point, any, any sort of additional troops we have will help. There is quite a big war going on, actually. Liberation of the Western Step Zones by Olo the Honourable. Uh, so where is he attacking? Step Zones are our... our oh, the Step Zone Isles, that's the one. Um, wow, a lot of troops. 14,000 men there. Usually you get very small revolts, but that's quite a big one. Are they going to be able to beat this army? I think they will do. Yeah, quite comfortably. So they may be able to take the Western Step Zones unless they can ferry some more troops across. A couple of wars going on quite in quite a few provinces, actually. It's a war in the Stormlands. It looks like the Trident. I said there was nothing going on in the Trident, suddenly there's a war. Ah, they're attacking uh, the Westerlands for Nun's Deep. Where's Nun's Deep? Oh, right there. So I... But that's traditionally theirs. Why are they trying to take it? That's a bit, a bit naughty of them. But I'll let them fight. We're not going to get involved, of course. We, we don't really have a choice. We are loyal to our liege, the king. If he goes to war, we go to war. If he doesn't go to war, we don't go to war. That's, that's just how it works. So yeah, we're just waiting for that claim. And then we'll be good to go. So we need to choose how to educate my son, Osni. We're going to groom him for command as well. I tend to like to educate uh, male heirs in command. It means we don't have a very balanced um, group of people. But if he's going to be a leader anyway, I'd like him to be able to protect himself and his realm. Our son has become kind as well, which is nice. We may actually use Sir Mala to educate my other son as well. He's been pretty useful in giving my son a good education. Educa education. Say it, say it properly. Um, and he's actually... He's not particularly well-rounded. Three stewardship, two diplomacy. It's not maybe the best, but is that for my son? Yeah, my son now needs a tutor. So we'll ask Sir Mala if he will educate Osni as well. Don't think there's anyone better. No, it doesn't look like it. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll stick with Mala. He's a pretty good tutor, to be honest. It would be nice if he was the same uh, culture as us, but the, I don't want to be too picky with it. I just want him to be good at... Sword, swordsmanship and martial. My son is a trained fighter. Laren Longspear is already a trained fighter, so I think he's already as good as we are. Yeah, he is. A party of soldiers flying the banner of Master Gorgon of Sizek recently set up camp in the middle of a field belonging to a farmer in Duskendale. According to the farmer, the campfire spread out of control and his entire crop was reduced to ashes. So we can either demand that our mast, uh, Master of Sizek, our vassal, pay his compensation, or say it was a divine act, or pay the farmer out of our own comps. We're going to go for the top one. I want to keep some justice. I mean, he is a vassal, so we are going to lose some troops from that, which is a bit annoying. We actually have 7,000 men now, which is a really good amount to have, compared to his 3.4 thousand. He's gaining a few more, but not a, a massive sort of rate of knots to, to be increased. Uh, what, what am I even saying? To, rate of knots? What are you on about? Don't use nautical expressions. Um, yeah, he's not getting troops that quickly. So hopefully we'll still be able to outmatch him in terms of outright numbers, which will hopefully win us the war. When the war actually starts, it is taking quite a long time. Our Septon wants a reward for his good service. We shall arrange that reward. No point being skimpy with them. Uh, we can't build anything just yet. I mean, a lot of things are obviously reduced in price, but we still can't quite afford them. And I'm happy with how we're set up at the moment. We don't have massive amounts of improvement. I mean... Duskendell has had quite a lot of improvement to increase the tax income from it. Uh, but that's only going to increase as we give out these lands and we stop having problems with taxes and levies. We just collected a tithe as well, which is nice. A bit of gold for us. Uh, I can't actually remember who's... Okay, one of my courtiers is educating my daughter. So she's 9 and he's 10. Uh, how old is my son? My son is 14, so he's very close to being able to take land for himself. He's stressed for some reason. Which is a bit worrying. Uh, and Gianna Greatwood, who is a genius, which is why we went for the betrothal. She's 11, so it's going to take a couple more years before they're actually married. But we can give him land as soon as he turns 16. We'll start to give him some land. I think we might give him Birch Hall and Antlers. Uh, keep these three for myself, because we can hold three. Um, and then almost do it like a cycle. So when he has children of his own, his sons will get these two and keep Duskendale. Uh, something like that, because he's the heir, so eventually he'll control most of it. So, just make sure we're giving out enough land to enough people to make sure we're getting the most troops and money we can. Because when we do need to go to war, hopefully we'll have plenty of men to do it with. We've actually lost some men. Quite a lot of men. Don't quite know what's going on there. I presume it's just because our vassals don't like us that much. Maybe we can send a gift to a couple of them. We'll send a gift to him. 
and we'll send a gift to... Oh, should we send a gift to all of them? Maybe we should. We have... Ah, no we won't, because we've got the, high, the claim on the High Lordship of Cracklaw Point, so we don't have much gold left. Uh, but maybe there are a couple more we can just... Where is it? There it is. Uh, who has the most men, actually? Let's have a look at this. Uh, Ryan, the city of Duskendale, has uh, the most. So we'll see if we can send him a gift. No, we don't have enough money. We can grant him a knighthood, though. So let's do that, because that will make him really like us a lot more and give us a couple of extra men. Um, can we grant him a knighthood? No. And we, oh, we can send him a gift, or we can award him an honorary title. So let's do that. But I think for now, actually... We might as well. We might as well attack North Cracklaw Point right now and see if we can take it. Um, I am going to... and I, This is going to sound like I'm cheating. I am going to save it. Don't think I'm doing that so I can restart. I won't restart. It's just because my computer has been crashing a lot recently. And I suddenly had this sudden panic that it was going to do it. So I'm just going to save over it. Don't... I'm not going to re... I'm not reloading it or anything. I should probably cut that out to be honest. But I'm not reloading. I'm just saving it just in case. And then we are declaring war on... Dusk, uh, North Cracklow Point to press all the claims. So we will get uh, a claim on Rook's Rest, Cracklow Baron, Diaden, The Whispers, and North Cracklow Point. So lots of land could soon be ours. Why did I unpause it without raising my men? So we have a lot of men ready to go. He doesn't have that many. So we're all going to march to Hollard Hall and form up there, get our best commanders on it. I'm just hoping the king doesn't interrupt because that would be very annoying to say the least if he ordered us to end the war. The other good thing about attacking here is they're, they're a bit trapped. As long as we can get to Cracklaw Baron, they can't sneak around the back and start attacking our land. We'll have Ben on the right flank. We'll actually have Melwis in the middle, I think, because he's our best commander, and put Imri on the side. Uh, they are going to try and get to North Cracklaw Point or go round us if they can, but we should have the garrison big enough to stop any of them. So we managed to catch a few men there. We're just going to march in, destroy this big army, and then probably attack North Cracklow Point. Try and take his family prisoner if we can, and take all his land at once. We can actually get our uh, council to be doing other things. So we're going to start straight away fabricating some claims on Rosby and building a spy network there as well. Uh, try and see if we could do any damage intrigue-wise. Uh, managed to take a Tarbeck prisoner, which is interesting. Not sure why a Tarbeck's up here fighting. But we're going to siege North Crackle Point, try and take it as quickly as possible, see if we can capture any more of his family, which would be very useful for us. We're just going to insult it. We have enough men. Uh, there we go. We managed to capture him, in fact, I think. So we'll now enforce the demands and take North Crackle Point for ourselves. We now have ten provinces in our name. Uh, why is that saying title loss? Surely it's all going to the same person. It's all going to Laren Longspear, surely. I'm a bit confused why that's saying that I'm going to lose that land. Let me have a proper read of it. Um, following titles will be lost on succession. Success <laughs> there. Can't say words. Why would they be lost? Surely they would just go to my son. Okay, it's disappeared now. I think it was just a bit messed up at the time. Um, prisoners are saying they want to be let out. We'll ransom them all once, see if we can get any money from it, and then we'll just release the rest. Wow, we got 60 gold from that. That was very useful. Uh, we'll just release the rest, though. I'm not really interested in keeping prisoners at this point. Um, it's just going to cause hassle if they try and fight us to free themselves. I forgot to release one there. Just jostling left. There we go. So we have taken North Cracklow Point for ourselves. It was a very quick war. Not a lot went wrong there. It was kind of the perfect battle. Um, and our son is nearly of inheriting age, at which point can we in fact just grant him the High Lordship. No, we can't grant him the High Lordship of North Cracklaw Point, which is a bit annoying. Goodwin Pyle, for some reason, still owns it. Because he holds one last bit of land. That is so annoying. I hate it when that happens. So we're going to have to march down there and, and take him out, basically. But first we're going to have to fabricate a claim on it. Uh, so, that's really... And I th Do we have a truce now as well? Do we have a truce with him? Uh, of course we do. When you think everything's going really well, and then suddenly it's not. So we have too much land that we can handle. We've got vassals that are going to be unhappy with us for that. 
and we have someone that we can't go to war with for 10 years controlling our High Lordship. But we're going to have to try and fabricate a claim as soon as possible. How many heirs does he have? He has quite a lot, to be honest. There's eight living members left. And our intrigue isn't high enough to really start assassinating or anything like that. So we're going to have to try and fabricate, fabricate a claim on Atterdale. We might have to just declare war on him and accept the prestige and relationship penalty. And I think it gives us some dishonour. But I'd rather take the High Lord trip for ourselves and then we can give Atterdale back to someone else. Get it away from our land. We don't really want a piece of land down there. It makes us vulnerable. I just want to have a nice, solid bit of land as our kingdom. I mean, at the moment, we are looking rather nice in terms of land. If we have a look at diplomatic relations, we can see we own all of this, which is very nice. Uh, and yeah, we're starting to build a nice little start of a kingdom here, which I'm very happy about. I think I'm going to wrap the episode up now. I know it might be a bit shorter. I'm not quite sure how long this is going on for. But I feel like we've hit a milestone. I want to stop it, take some time to think about what we're going to do next, and then move on from there. If you have enjoyed the video, please do feel free to leave a like. It's not compulsory, but it is always appreciated when you do. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.